Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to take a look at AP Chemistry Unit 9, Section 6, which is about how we can manipulate chemical reactions and what effect that has on its thermodynamic favorability. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. That way you'll have access to all my review videos and AP Daily Lessons as well. Well, we've talked about thermodynamically favored processes in the last couple of videos, and we said that if it's thermodynamically favored, that means it's a process that, generally speaking, is going to happen at a certain temperature. Now, mathematically, that means it's delta G, it's change in Gibbs free energy, is less than zero. So it's a negative number. So just as an example, there are some processes that you don't even need to have data for. You can probably figure it out if it's a thermodynamically favored process or not. For example, on the, the screen here, we see the melting of ice on a hot summer day. I think you'll agree that that is going to happen. That is a thermodynamically favored process. Now, how about if we have water, maybe water in a cup or in a glass, is it going to decompose into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas at 20 degrees Celsius? Well, generally speaking, that doesn't happen. You can have water and it's, it's not going to decompose at that room temperature. So that's not a thermodynamically favored process. What about this? Let's say that we take a, a very superheated piece of iron up to 1500 degrees Celsius and we drop that into liquid water. Is that liquid water going to get hotter? Most definitely, isn't it? So that also is a thermodynamically favored process. What about this, though? If we have a broken egg, maybe it's on the floor, someone has dropped it, is that broken egg going to rearrange itself into a round, unbroken egg just on its own? Well, it's not, is, is it? That's kind of ridiculous even to think about that. So that is not a thermodynamically favored process. If we had to assign a delta G for that itself, it would certainly be a positive number. Well, as it turns out, if a process is thermodynamically favored in one direction, then it has to be a non-thermodynamically favored process in the reverse reaction. So what that means is, let's take this, this first example here. We all were in agreement that that is a thermodynamically favored process. Well, what about the reverse of that? Liquid water freezing on a hot summer day. Well, that's not thermodynamically favored, is it? If it's thermodynamically favored in one direction, it's not in the opposite. So we can take the second example as well. What about if hydrogen gas and oxygen gas are reacted into water at 20 degrees Celsius? And yes, that is a thermodynamically favored process. All we need for that is, is a very small spark, and we have a reaction. So it doesn't have a very high activation energy at all. In this third example, what about this? What about liquid water gets colder when a superheated piece of iron is added? No, in fact, that sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? So that is not a thermodynamically favored process. And then in this last example, what about we drop an egg and it cracks and breaks? Well, yeah, that's going to happen, isn't it? That's a thermodynamically favored process. So once again, if it's favored in one direction, it is not favored in the opposite direction. Now, we're going to uh, take this concept and we're going to take it a step further in something called thermodynamic coupling. Now, sometimes there are chemical processes that we would really like to happen that, to be honest, just do not happen. This is a lot like Hess's law that we learned in Unit 6, but we can't call it Hess's law because it's not change in enthalpy. This is delta G. This is called thermodynamic coupling. So if we have this process right here, if you have copper uh, one sulfide, it would be really nice if you could take that copper one sulfide and just decompose it and get copper out of that. You know, copper is used for all kinds of industrial purposes, wiring, all kinds of things. It's a great conductor. But unfortunately, if you have a compound, an ore or something that is copper sulfide containing, copper one sulfide, and you trust, uh, just try to heat it up and get copper and sulfur out of that, it's not going to happen very easily. In fact, notice its delta G is a positive value. It is not a thermodynamically favored process. So 
what do we do? Well, we don't just throw our hands up and give up. There is another reaction that we can couple that with that will actually make this process possible. So what if we have this? If we take a look at sulfur plus oxygen gas, it provides us with sulfur dioxide gas, and that reaction in itself has a delta G that is very negative. So that is a thermodynamically favored process. So here's the deal. If we take these two reactions and we add them together, so if we add the two reactions together, we can cancel out the sulfurs right there, and when you add them together, we get copper one sulfide solid plus oxygen gas yields two moles of copper and a mole of sulfur dioxide. And to find the delta G of that new reaction, well, since we added the individual reactions together, we have to add those delta Gs together as well. And we find that the delta G of this process is very much thermodynamically favored. It's negative 214.2 kilojoules per mole. So if you remember doing Hess's law back in unit six, this is the same thing. Uh, all you have to do is add the reactions and add those delta G values together. If you learned something from this video, please slam that like button. And I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to move on to the next part of Unit 9, which is all about electrochemistry. Hope to see you then.